uh, Marcus already said, this is a guided tour, so I probably touch some things, but not everything. Uh, I'll try to, to see the hotspots, uh, to show the different hotspots. What I'm going to do is, uh, I will show you how to create a little application from scratch, uh, compile it, debug it maybe, um, using the UI bundle, create a standalone application, including a deployable package. Um, I will show you the UIC product and um, maybe some other things that we have to Okay, that's the uh, first I have. When it comes up, it normally comes up like this, but it's probably too small for those on the back. So I started another image, which is actually showing bigger fonts. It looks very ugly, that's not a normal situation. This guy should be bigger, but I just to have you somehow here. Getting more way to look at the screen. Um, okay, let's start in the, in the system browser. Um, the system browser looks pretty much like in, in Visual Works. And I start now with the tools. I won't look at the implementation of the new tools. So let's start a new, uh, new class, maybe a new application class. And if you all know that, um, hello, Facebook, maybe. So, um, create some visual code, yes. And actually, you can write out, write or start it, and it's created some default uh, UI for us, which we probably don't want. Um, so maybe we, we start with editing the, the menus. Like, I uh, probably won't need all these, these items, so let's just delete them. And save it. Oops. A debug mode. That was by purpose. Um, and let's save it again. The debug is done. All. So you know this all because it looks like Visual Works or like Visual Angel, like everybody else. As you see, here's a, native, here's a window. It's not a native window, it's like in Visual Works, it's drawn by me. So if you don't like this style, you can change it. It's like the old agnotive style, which nobody likes anymore. So we go back to this style. But who knows what will come. It's a bit of work to adapt the widget as a new rule because I don't use native widgets. If I had used native widget, I would have reprogrammed the stuff in the last 25 years, at least five times. So. Okay, so the second thing I'm going to change is probably the UI. Maybe we add a button in there. Maybe a close button, just about here. I would say maybe a okay, closing. I would say maybe close, close request. Visual works guys will remember these messages. It's probably just the same as they used to know. And let's start this guy again and close it, and that's it. So that's the first part of, of programming something. And the second part um, is maybe some debugging. Um, maybe you write a test page for that. There's not much to test here. So let's say new test case. We create something for me to start with, which I probably don't need. So, I don't know what to test here. Um, let's say hello, Lisa. Oops, I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, no, that is not good. Just, just good. Just to have something to show. And we can run here, and obviously it has not much to fail. Uh, what we can do is we can also run the, the real uh, the real test program, the full test program, which also finds it here. And actually, if, if the test case says what is covered by it, which I will show, so I will say, here it is. Covered class names. And it's just the term area. With uh, hello, Lisa. If I have this, then I get a coverage enabled, and I can open this and run it, and then I see what it's covered by, because obviously nothing. Uh, you would see in the green, orange, or whatever, which is covered by that. Um, the test case is going of course be exported in, in various formats. For example, in a unit competitive format that thanks to the speed guys, and you can run it under some Jenkins here. And have your test open here. Oops, that's the wrong one. Sorry, that's the wrong one. And you would run the tests like this 
stuff here, uh, and then you go there and you see all the text output uh, as a test result. So that's all stuff that we're doing, including some of the information and stuff. Um, now that we have this, we want to make this a standalone application. So the next thing is, I open up a packager which allows me to define what is going to be in this deployed package. So the first thing is I say, okay, it's a three application. Um, then I say, um, what is the project package ID? Now, I made a mistake, basically, if I'm not assigning it to a package. Uh, I can switch to view, project and package, which is the same, it's just a stupid name here. And I define a new one, and let's call it ASIN. Hello, yes. I think there is already one, so I call it Hello, yes, too. And then I go back, and I can move all of these classes. So I move this, um, uh, let's go back to this one. Um, and I move this stuff to the package. And maybe also this one. And as you see now in the project in the Hello Easy, we have these three classes. And this one is a, like the Monticello configuration. It's a description of what is contained. So there's great reasons and contents now, which is listed. I can update this in the video. Oops, that's the problem. False customer, I understand. That's what all this for me. Sorry. I will explain later why this happened, but for now we just ignore it. Um, so uh, I try to update that stuff um, and generate these definitions. And now we have a list of what is contained in this package. Uh, you can define some things like company name and so on. Uh, going back to this one, we can now select it and say it should be the ASO converted. Um, then I define which application class is in. Thank you. 
Beispiel. Your compiler complained that some parts of the farms. Ah, let's try something else. Well, actually, I will mention it too, maybe it's too really good, but let's just try it. I tried this hundred times, so... <laughs> The only create creates an executable, the make all uh, also creates an, an also deployable package which you can deliver. So everything will be contained in that single package. <coughs> and here they, they see the errors. <laughs> you mean they can't find something? Yeah. Yeah. Well that was just I think it was trying to remove a temporary file which is already uh, created, I think. So actually now it's creating an also system. I hope it will run actually. Yeah. I'm not sure that it didn't. It has not much to fail here. I will try again then. <laughs> Maybe offline. I don't know how much time so now that's finished, and let's see again. And now we have a hello case of setup and the hello ASO, and we try this one. Um, hello ASO setup, where is it? No ASO, hello, so sorry, that's, that's it. And I can run it. Okay. Let's see what it's going to, to what, it, what it contains. It contains a bunch of DLLs, which I will show you in a minute what they contain. And it will install it in here. And now we have our hello ASO here. And let's see. I hope it will come. Probably not because the other one failed as well. <laughs> so um, I'll check. Let me check this. Um, So I have a question. Yeah, please. Um, at, at this point, do you got blogging or something like that that would <coughs> show you what's happened? Well, this is this is just a quick way to do it. That's not the normal way to build. I'll show you how to build normally. So the normal way would be different, um, but it's probably not going either because there, there's something wrong with my libraries. Yes. The normal way would be, and that's that's the next thing I, I tell you how we how we usually do our projects. It's um, we define uh, a source code repository where we put the stuff in. For example, here I define that my default source code repository is going to be CDS, except for all these packages here. And then within CDS, I define that everything which is in this package top of ESO goes into the local repository here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I check this into a repository. So I take this and say CDS check in. And you now ask me for some for something to replace it. And maybe the other one as well. And this one as well. Okay, if I now go uh, on my command line level.
So they are integrated into the build process and then you say make and uh, now you compile the stuff. And that's it. But as, as, I, as I said before, this is only the final process which you do before deployment usually. You develop in small talk, I will continue now in small talk and never go back to this level. But, um, so sure. you, work, you stay in the system here and until you're ready with the application and then you just file, file it out or put it in the repository, create from there, and then you've got the exit here again. Very probably as well. Yeah, I can trace from here. So, so maybe you could tell us what I thought you'll tell us at the beginning, which is why we should use small talk X. And I'm inferring it has to do with the fact that you can generate <coughs> native code for certain operating systems. And well, but, but the, I'm missing the big picture. Well, uh, I will ask you to, to use small talk X because it's free anyway, and uh, I don't care actually if you use it or not. So it's not, it's not a sales thing, what I do. But um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it allows you to, to create native executables without bytecode. So there's no image. Mm -hmm. And you can strip it down by, let, by, by, by not including uh, standard classes here now. You see there is this libbasic uh, lib basic with you and stuff, these DLLs, they contain all the classes. So in the basic there is all the array and all the collection and that stuff. But you can leave that out, you can create your own lib basic if you like, which only contains string and object if you know, if you want. And even leave out strings. Um, and I will show you this in a minute how that would work. So you can actually on a very, very fine grain define grain uh, defined what is in what is in not the image, but what is in the executable. Yes. Okay. And now coming back to the image, now with all that background, uh, how is the system itself generated? Now the system itself, the system itself is built, actually when I bootstrap the system, let's go there, when I bootstrap the system, uh, I wrote a bunch of classes using traditional like editors, um, actually like, let's go just to all production to all um, and typed in in a VI or whatever there was, some editor, um, come on. And type in these small code classes in Chuck format. And then I wrote a compiler which reads that stuff and generates a C code file from it with the same semantics, so including context and blocks and closures and everything. Um, and then I compile this C file to an object file. So I, what I get is a bunch of object files which contain this object you see here which contain this stuff, for example, here is all the collection of object, and there's for each class in my new basic package, in the package, there's one object file. And in the end, I put all these object files together to create a DLL. And this is my new basic DLL. Now, this one contains all my standard classes. Now, uh, to do that for all the packages, I have view, widget, compiler, bytecode compiler, and all this GUI painter, and all these classes are packaged up like this. And in the end, what you get is one big bunch of DLLs. Now let's see the DLL. So that's all the stuff, including, for example, here is a refactory browser and it changes list and other stuff. It's all packaged into DLLs. <coughs> and a whole bunch of them. And there's a single exit, which is a startup exit, which is pretty small. And what it does at startup, it reads this file. Uh, it reads this file which says which modules to load. And that's the set of classes you will have in the initial non-image because there is no image. Mm -hmm. Initially. Now, if I say, say, okay, great, I am sitting in the middle of the night and my wife calls and says, I'm immediately home, dinner is ready. Then, of course, I can still exit, say, the image, which takes, uh, and then come up later, and restart where I left off. So the development process looks pretty much like you, you know from Visual Version. The, the deployment process is completely different. So that's, that's the difference. And the other thing is, I started this whole thing because I couldn't get a Visual Version license at that time. <laughs> 
So, so I made my small talk, and uh, which was started in '87. So, some 23 years ago, no, actually, longer. And um, over that time, a lot of stuff it, 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 uh, evolved, of, of course. And initially, I had the illusion of maybe becoming a major small talk player. It never worked out, so we use that tool now for our own project, projects, which we which we deploy as a standalone executable, and the user the, 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 the user doesn't even notice that it's small talk, usually. So that's the, the big picture again. Um, okay, now let's come to a, a few a few maybe goodies which are in there because we compile to C, and well no let's, let's go back. Uh, so what, what you see now here in this, in this kind of image is more or less uh, a set of a set of metal, metal objects which have a pre pre-filled Jitter cache more or less. So if you normally have bytecode, well let me let me show you a, a concrete method like this one, which doesn't work obviously. And if I inspect it, um, if I inspect this method. Uh, you see that there is a bunch of fields which you might know and, uh, and a bunch of fields which you don't. So you might know this bytecode field here, which I decompiled with this method. And that's, some, that's kind of sometimes well known bytecodes, actually. So the encoding is different because it's mine, so it's not a standard encoding. Um, but from the functionality, it's about the same in all these machines. And I also have, which is, which is a code pointer, and usually this points to to a function to, to the real machine code. So if I ever execute this code, let's do this, so basically the main, I don't know, just for the sake of it. Uh, and now I look into the method. Oops. Okay, 
I'm going to give this to my STC compiler, but STC is clever, and if he encounters this sequence, it will let, let it just pass through and not compile it. So if I do something like this, and then say in the printf, I don't know, just to start with, probably I don't want to do any really complex. Oops. Yeah, sure. Um, now you see the browser was smart enough to detect, actually it's the compile, compile method code. It's smart enough to detect that there's primitive code in it. So what it does, it, it saves it to a file, calls the STC to compile it to C code, calls the, the, the C compiler to compile it to an object, loads the object as a DLL, and binds it into this DH again. That's how you, do, how you deal with that stuff. So if I can just do a word and do this kind of stuff, accept it, um, now I have my primitive code in there. So in, in my small talk X, there is no primitive in the VM. All the primitives are in the classes, in the libraries. So if you look at the code and if you want to know how well, damn, how is that basic app of an error by error, error, well, here's the code. Or if you want to look at how float, I don't know, some, some floats, I don't know, trick, what, this one, sine, cosine, is done. Obviously, if you look at this, uh, what it does, well, first it does some easy and stuff, and then it says easy to float, and it creates uh, a new quick float. Things like that. So you can do this. There's a bunch of macros to unbox a box because obviously the objects are smaller objects when they come in. And if I'm the C level, you have to work on the C level. Uh, but you can do this pretty easily. Uh, let's go back to our byte array example. So let's assume. Where is it? Actually, here we are. Uh, the modified stuff is, is in red, so I'll find it. So if I pass in an argument, so I want to say part, search for any, uh, and I look at the any inside here, it will be a small talk object. So a small talk object has to be first somehow checked if it's the correct type. So what I first do is I say, okay, it is it's a small integer of the any. Oops, sorry. Small integer. Any. Then I do all that stuff, and maybe I return here. I will explain in a minute what the pick return is, return self, maybe. Just to start with. And in the end, because this counts syntactically as a statement, I can continue in small talk. Self error. So now let's try it. And I usually write a little comment at the end, which, which just explains how it works. So one, two, three, four. Search for. Uh, let's do. A float. Oops, sorry. It's another bug. It's this guy who creates that stuff and it removes everything uh, below. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I should have known. Um, one, two, three, four. Search for. Um, one, two. I hope it's that guy. Yeah, it's that guy. Okay, and if I do that, obviously I get it. It's a comment. Finally, something I would love to have from you. Occasionally, occasionally, yes, I, now I have all the guys here so I can ask for it. <laughs> occasionally I would like to have an end of my comment, right? Can we, can we, can we make this one a standard, please? It's not, it's not used in any English, I searched all of them, and it's really helpful. Right? So you can say something like this. And let's say comment it. <laughs> Especially great if there is already a double column somewhere, a double code somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, um, now because I've got all these guys here, so maybe you change all your passwords before you <laughs> invent something new. I have it already. It works great. Okay, um, now let's do this, and again, of course, we get an error. And uh, the debugger cannot debug into the C code in here, so it, for it, it's atomic. You can only single step over that stuff. If you want to debug this inside, you can run the whole small X under a GDB <laughs> or under Visual Studio, and then even debug there if you want. But um, I kind of say don't overuse primitives. You can make so many bad things in there uh, and crash everything pretty easily. So 
a single bad assignment and you can ruin your whole day. <laughs> so we would say, okay, is this a small integer? Then let's say integer what do we search for equals intel of the any. I guess all of you DM guys have similar macros. Because that's a tag integer line and it just looks for a tag and the other one just pops up the tag. And then we can say, okay, I don't know what this is mem search, I think. So we say mem search. And you see that I'm uh, here in the house, you know, that by heart. I think mem search. And then you say uh, byte array value, which gives you a pointer. Well, of self, um, comma, this what? Something like that. And we may. We may make a crash. I make, I'm a, I, I show you how a crash looks. Character points are bad, and they equal zero, and we say indirect bad equals one to three. Uh, we accept that. Uh, I made probably a mistake. What does it say? Uh, Unresolved external min search. Um, I really don't know by heart now. Or just to give you an idea, I mean, you, you got it, I guess. So let's do this bad thing, and now we get, well, obviously we should call it now with something which enters this code. So now we got a segmentation violation, which is called, and I get some friends back here, I got there, because usually if you get a segmentation violation, the VM thinks, oh, that's a bad thing. <coughs> Probably I should dump the backtrace with how I got there. And um, so that's coming from the VM from very, very, very deep down below. But then the VM says, maybe it's not too bad, I raise a signal for that. So you can even catch it if you like. So <laughs> operating system segmentation violation, handle do, and then <laughs> <laughs> So, um, okay, that's the way how primitives work. And of, of course, now let's, let's look at some, some concrete examples what you can do. You can, you can put cryptographic stuff and uh, buy into the MD5 library pretty easily using that stuff. So that's the for MD5. MD5 stream, great. So there is an initialization which is probably the MD5 setup things. Uh, we set video <coughs> MD5 put the MD5 in it. So all the next put, well the next put sounds strange, but next put an object, let's see what it does with the object. Here you see it looks, is it a string or a symbol that it does this one, so it's the MD5 update. So and actually you can specify at by this time. Oh, well, that's a bad example. Maybe a better one. Anyway, you can spe at, at this time when you arrive here, a context has been set up. So if there's an error within that primitive, you have a context. But for very, very cheap things, you can even say, I don't even want to set up a context. So, so the, the overhead of, of getting into the primitive is actually zero. All right. Uh, the next question is, how does the C code look like? Yes. So, are your native methods, do, do they follow the standard C conventions? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, actually, that's where I was about to come. How does the C code look like? So, uh, yeah. let's see what the STC generates as output. So, let's go just to the basic and look into, let's say, float. And uh, float, let's see, float. Um, that's the original input, and there is a method for that's for method for arc sign. I think that's it somewhere here. And, well, that's the stuff I, that I just mentioned. The no context setup, which is pretty quick, and actually you are without any overhead in there. So let's see what the arc sign looks like here. Of course, this is automatically generated code, so it's unreadable. It's completely unreadable, and it also does a lot of work around for individual compiler bugs. Um, for example, Visual C doesn't like string constants longer than I think 32k or 64k, things like that. Uh, pretty hard. Okay, let's search for R sign here. And that's the method which gets generated, so it, it uses a running number to, to prevent any uh, duplicate names. Then you see self, selector, and now that's funny, what is that? That's a point to the inline cache structure. So basically my calls are uh, using inline cache, but I cannot do self-modifying calls, so I have to do an indirect inline cache call. So I call through the self, and I pass the address of the cell around so that the lookup algorithm can, can update it. So my send macro, which is this one, is basically an indirect function call. 
through a cell which is initially set up to point to the lookup. And the lookup gets the address, patches it, so the next time it's a call directly to the function. Okay, so here we are. And of course, at the target site, everybody who, who cares, who, whoever who knows about inline cache calling, at the target site, you have to look if you are here, if you are correct, and, and if you're not here, right, just just uh, uh, inline cache. So the first thing you do here is to check if you are really allowed to be here, and then you repeat the send. Or you end up here, and this is the code as I showed before, which is just the arc sign code passed through. So here is the double val result and so on. And that's the stuff which we ended up here. Double val result. So the STC just lets this stuff through when we compile it. So that's about that's about the setup. Any questions? <laughs>